Today, we're doing some diving here near the uh, Lower Manhattan Helipad. And it's gonna be an interesting spot because uh, this is an area where just some divers back in 2016 found some potential jawbones of prehistoric you know, animals. I have it on good faith on two different divers, one who's still in the industry, one's retired, that found mammoth, not mammoth, large big bones, big bones, if you will, and they didn't know what they were. And they just discarded them and continue what they were doing because they were construction divers. But now we're not here doing construction. Daddy's here diving for bones. So we're gonna get anchored down, set up. I believe the water is gonna be a little bit more shallow in that location. So we're gonna be able to get in and spend a lot of time on the bottom, just crawling around hands and knees. We're more prepared today. We learned a lot yesterday and today we're gonna not make the same mistakes. So hopefully we can just spend some time efficiently diving and uh, down on the bottom, find something cool. So I'm back again, collaborating with Heavy and his crew. Um, as you guys know, we've done this in the past where there's water been involved. Things are a little bit different now. Over the next couple of days, we're in New York City with Bone Rush looking for mammoth bones. It's gonna be awesome. Today's plan is we're gonna splash Santiago the legend first and make sure on the bottom is all good for Diesel Dave to land, make sure there's no obstructions or rebar. And then we're gonna splash Dave. After Dave, I believe uh, Doug Bishop's going next. And then Sparks, I believe, is third. And we're gonna uh, go into this little cove that all of our research led us to. And we're gonna see if we can find some bones there. Kind of this? No, we're gonna nose up against it because there's warning signs Holy everywhere feet, telling us we foot. can't be here. So we're gonna launch the ROV, which is our remote contact. underwater vehicle, and we're gonna see the bottom conditions. And if we see something promising, we're gonna figure out how the hell we're gonna do this legally and logistically. Bro, did you pay the cable bill? I thought that was your job. We literally put it in your name on your social security number for that very reason. Has this ever happened to you? Just sitting around, trying to watch a show, and your dummy buddy forgot to pay the bill, or worse yet, you have like 400 different streaming services and you keep signing up for a new one and you keep forgetting the sponsor of today's video. And the reason we've been able to do this awesome bone rush is this guy right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Channel Master. You see, this guy right here is an antenna. And you may be looking at it thinking like, who uses antennas anymore? Well, we do. And I'm about to show you why, because this bad boy is gonna open up that bad boy to a whole lot of channels that didn't exist before and you only have to pay for it one time and it's pretty affordable, super simple, and you can get rid of all your streaming services that you're not using. So watch this. I'm gonna go put this on the roof and we're gonna watch a show. Ask Jeeps. How did you know that? I didn't even have time to read it. I give up. So as you can see, we got TV. Literally, put the antenna up on the roof, hook the cable to the back of the TV, and now we have channels. You see, there's local broadcast networks everywhere that are still broadcasting TV in your area, but your TV doesn't have a strong enough antenna to be able to pick up any of those signals. One-time fee. You buy the antenna once, no monthly fee, no subscription, no nothing, just a bunch of crystal clear channels and no monthly recurring bills. The products are made right here in the USA. They have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you buy it and you don't like it, or it doesn't work in your area, we'll send it back. I'm gonna get you guys $50 off the price plus free shipping. So click the link in my description below, one time fee, get your house or cabin or off grid, you know, whatever you got going on set up with crystal clear TV with a lot of awesome channels. Thank you Channel Master for sponsoring the video and thank you guys for supporting us and supporting our sponsors. Now go watch your favorite show. I'm probably gonna call in sick for us today. <laughs> Hold on. Six. 
Remember all the slack we had? Lift it up and bring it over on this side of the dolphin. See what happened? That bottom's all, uh, all mud. So that's, not, that's also promising because if it gets stuck in mud, it stays there typically. Rock bottoms, rocky bottoms, like you'll have up here in the estuary channel, it's all rock bottoms. So if it was dumped there, it will wash away. It makes it more difficult. We got 10, 10 and a half feet. 10 and a half feet. So three and a half feet of fluff? You're gonna find it. It's gonna be it's right gonna over be here. Right why, why did they think they dumped it over here? It's not that they dumped it over there. We think that it came over here, traveled over It would come here. down and go into, it would go into this cove. So if it was from there, it would go anywhere in this cove along this way. Kind of like so start here and work, tape like this and go in. Run. I say go on the other side between 11 and, and, uh, and 17 and we anchor down and we, we hit it hard. Because it's going to come this way. Tying up like this is dangerous, so we're debating on whether we should do it at all or not. Basically, we're not allowed to tie up to the dolphins because they're posted on the far one, which is nearest the terminal, so that makes sense. But this one's there's no posting, so we might be allowed to anchor off here. But we're gonna what we want to do is we want to check this corner right here by the ferry slip. If there's something there that could have came in with the tide, turbidity, whatever. Uh, we can't see it on the ROV because of this money. So right now we're just gonna go check it out and I'll just get in and out real quick and if it's not there then we'll move to the other side where it's safer. So now we're gonna run the back winch line to the opposite side of the boat to the pier and we're gonna tighten everything up and stay stationary right here. We're gonna have divers get in and we're gonna sweep from left to right. Go that way. Because if things wash this way with the current, they're gonna hit inside here and they're gonna lay at rest and they're gonna stay in here. It's really difficult for things to wash out of here. So we're feeling really confident about this section of the river. For those of you who don't know, um, I'm no longer with the search organization I used to be with. I am now with United Search Corps. We're a nonprofit organization, uh, being a voice for the voiceless and representing the unrepresented, as well as fighting for those who can't fight for themselves. 600,000 people go missing each and every single year, and that's what I'm still fighting for. We're out searching for missing people. And if you guys want to keep up with everything that I'm going to be doing in the near future with United Search Corps, make sure you connect with those platforms. Check us out online. Go to our website. Look at all the cool information that we have on our website. There's a lot there. Um, it, reach out to us. If you know somebody that's missing, if you have somebody that's missing in your family, reach out to me. We want to represent you. We want to be a voice for your family member. Please, reach out to us. We're going to link him right down there below so that you can find it easily because, let's be honest, you're probably not going to search. But if it's clickable, you're going to click it, right? Thanks right. for being here, Dougie. Thanks, man. We got an orange, some water, stay hydrated. I just don't want to have to go to the bathroom too bad while I'm down there. It's going to be hard to get out of the suit. Stay in it. Stay in it. It's mandatory. It warms you up. It yeah. No zipper. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Eyes up here, man. Yo, 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 Eyes on the road. Black and diver all the time. Santiago the legend is right over there. Third set of piles in. He's doing a grid sweep of the bottom to see if we can find any man the test down there. Hey, legend. Yeah. Be mindful on your way back in. We can't pull you. You went around the dolphin. Yeah, Roger. I'm working my way back. Roger that. You got five, six minutes. You're up and out on diver. Up and out on diver. We have no hot. AJ, get on the hot water machine. The power for the well pump got cut off somehow, either a bad extension cord or something like that, and the hot water machine kept running without water through it. So we're letting that cool off now. We're gonna get this uh, well pump running back up right now. We got a new diver lined up in five minutes. Thank you, good. Boom, party time. Take a trip to the canal.
before you left surface. I'm touching bottom. Roger that, diver's on bottom. Let me know when you want slack. All right, Dave, I'm gonna send you a pneumo, okay? Send me a what? A pneumo. What that means is I'm gonna send you air to the orange line on your rig. Okay. You're gonna hear and feel bubbles coming out of it. Once you find where the air's coming from, I want you to put it to your chest. Yeah, you ready to play? Yeah. All right, Roger, start slacking, diver. Give him 10 feet increments. You're getting 10 feet of slack at a time. Again? The like square box. Something very deep. I'm not ready here. You have a square box? Yeah. You tell me more. Is it a crate? What are you, what are you feeling? I'm just trying to pull it up and see. Yeah, just pull it up. <laughs> when he gets to uh, the ladder, we'll figure out a method of getting it out, okay? Let's not give him too many moving parts. This is pretty big. I don't know if I'm going to pull it out of the water. Is it heavy? Right, yeah. Right. Is it full of gold? Yeah. Remember, I get half. That's how that works. Oh, he's got a, he's got a chunk of wood. You got to get in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the end of a block. <laughs> tell him it's a treasure box. Don't tell him it's wood. Does anybody have a key? <laughs> Oh, that was pretty good. So we've got Diesel Dave's haul lined up here. His treasure box, which is actually just the end of a piece of wood. Still not sure what the bone looking thing is. And then a sweet uh, piece of metal. What is this? That's uh, that's what that is, square spike. Square spike? I had bugs in my mustache, nobody told me. You got warm me. Let me see. Alright, Cortez, undress this man. Good. for that. <laughs> nice. It's not sense. what we're in New York for, though. <laughs> yeah, so the, the bottom's real silty. There were, yeah. there were times where I was down there and I'm several feet into it and it, it, it does, still doesn't stop. So it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to take digging to find anything here, like extreme digging and methodically, slowly, yeah. like just really digging in slowly. <laughs> My turn. I'm excited. We got a good system going on now and uh, we're going to get in there. Good news is it's really shallow over here. Bad news is it's really silty over here, which means the bottom that we're going to be walking on is like six to eight feet of just pure mud. So you can walk, kind of walk on the top of it, but if you're trying to find anything, you gotta like punch your hand through and dig in. So something that's been here for a long time is likely underneath all the silt and mud. 
and not likely to be just hanging out on the surface. We'll see. We'll see what we can find. I feel real heavy. I'm extra heavy D today. One glove cold, one glove hot. If anybody's gonna find anything, it's gonna be Dave. I can tell you that right now. He'll come up with something. Might not be bone, but it'll be something real weird. Roger, he's on bottom. Have him go into the canal or the, the channel area over here. Smash it to the hammer. Get me a magnet. Now we're oh! <laughs> yeah, clean it off. You got it in my eye. Yeah, there you go. Smart. Sure. He's like, I'll stop this prank. <laughs> and just dumped by a museum. And this could have been something. Oh, okay. That, uh, that's kind of cool. But man, if you don't have a target, you're just digging and wandering. All right, Dave and Dave have both dove. Now, we're just kind of letting the rest of the crew dive while Dave and Dave dry up, eat, get some food, some water. And uh, we just have a whole line of guys that are getting ready to dive to keep searching. Because that's the thing is like, we want to make sure that this area is free of any tusks. 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 I'll come to save your city through the water. Take it off, Cody. Back damn one shot. <laughs> yeah, that was the hard part too, is just not knowing where I was. Even though I knew I was somewhere not far, but I didn't know if I was over here, under here, over there, over there, and just kind of, you know. All right, so we just finished up our last dive of the day. And as we were finishing up, getting ready to head out, uh, a New York uh, police department boat rolled up and he said hey what are you guys doing he said uh we're recreational diving and he said you can't leave uh because i gotta call my captain and i gotta call the coast guard and i gotta call some other people and they gotta come talk to you we're like okay um next thing you know we've got one two three four nypd boats and one coast guard boat and now another coast guard boat coming over here and it looks like the coast guard is going to jump on board and talk to us um they say we're in a security zone because we're right here by the uh by the ferry terminal. Um, 
and close to the helipad, but we're not as close as they said we were. So I don't know. I think hopefully it's just a productive conversation here with NYPD, but technically they either have to arrest and detain us or let us go. So that's probably gonna be the conversation we have right now. Again, nothing but a huge respect for these guys. They're out here doing their job. And we're not gonna try to make their job any harder, but at the same time, we're not gonna be held here. I mean, we've been here for like an hour just being held here with no information. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna put up with that much longer because obviously we have our rights as well. Roger that, Cat. We're gonna be coming alongside shortly. Before we do, I have a couple questions for you. Let me know when you're ready to uh, answer. Over. Ready, sir. Can I have all passengers and crew uh, mustered there on the front deck? All passengers and crew of the Pelican can muster towards the front door of the Pelican. <laughs> I appreciate you guys' cooperation. We're at the uh, U.S. Coast Guard. We've got NYPD with us today. Uh, so the big reason coming out here today is you guys are in a security zone, uh, 25 yards off the ball ferry terminals. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to do a quick uh, safety sweep of the vessel, make sure it's good for us to be on board. We're looking to see if there's any flooding, anything like that. Once that, once that gets done, we'll kick off our boarding. I'm just going to see everybody's IDs, and then I'm going to see all the vessel documentation, please. Real quick. Yeah, Nick. Yep. One minute. We did find out the reason that we were stopped was because we are in what's considered a secure zone because the terminal ferry uh, is right behind us and you're supposed to be 25 yards away. So I understand, it makes sense. Check it out. All right, see you guys later. Stay good. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this incredible adventure that we went on. I know that I did. Uh, listen, we experienced a lot of firsts on this trip. Uh, first of all, uh, diving with hard hats. That is a totally new experience, something that I've never done before, but something that I definitely want to do a lot more of. It's a completely different diving experience than you know regular scuba diving because you know you have that giant helmet on that's creating this atmospheric pressure inside there. Um, while we were down there, we searched in a couple of different locations. Uh, obviously, we searched really close to the location that John Reeves disclosed on the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, now, keep in mind that this is day like number 70 of these divers in this water searching all these different locations. So we're not the first ones to be here. Keep in mind that Dirty Water Dawn and Chris from Blackwater Salvage and their whole team, they're the ones that did find an actual step bison jawbone. Now, there's no reason a step bison jawbone should have been in the East River unless it was dumped there. So it's bringing a lot of validity to the claim that there might actually be 50 tons worth of tusks and other prehistoric bones right here in the East River. So during our dive, uh, we encountered uh, a few issues. Day one, obviously, the current was a big deal for us because uh, when the tide comes up, when the tide goes down, that changes the direction that the East River flows. And we got about an hour of slack tide where basically the water was perfectly still. Dirty Water Dawn got down there and he did some searching about 60, 70 feet deep and uh, didn't find anything, but had some optimal search conditions. Next up, we had uh, the Law Father Cole who went under and you guys all saw what happened. Obviously, the tide uh, pulled him away and he didn't get a chance to even get to the bottom because the tide was pulling so hard, it basically sucked him up against the bottom of the boat and uh, we had to pull him in for his safety. So day one, we didn't get a, uh, a ton of diving done. I personally didn't even get to get in the water on day one. Day two was a totally different story because we went over near the heliport down uh, in Manhattan which is an area where it's kind of like a, an area where the East River would flow into this little nook and stuff could get possibly jammed up in there and not flow all the way out. So in searching that area, it was only seven, eight, 10 feet deep in most places. So it was uh, way better diving conditions. The current wasn't nearly as strong there. And so we all got an opportunity to dive multiple times in that spot. And obviously you saw things start popping up. Diesel Dave thought he found a treasure box. It was really a block of wood. Um, we found a lot of metal chunks and blocks and bricks. Uh, on my dive, 
I found something that was very interesting. Underwater, keep in mind, you've only got about six inches of visibility because it's just so murky and the water's moving around. You got a headlamp. So basically you're on your hands and knees, pretty much on your belly, kind of just digging yourself across the, uh, the floor of the uh, river there, hoping to just bump into something. And I was feeling around, I felt something that I knew wasn't a rock, I knew it wasn't, you know, something, just regular trash. And as I got closer to it and pulled it up, to me, it looked a lot like a giant hand or a giant paw. Uh, but I didn't want to get my hopes up too high because I realized that there could be a million different things. Maybe it was just a funny looking rock, even though it definitely didn't look like it because it had very clear looking fingers. So I took that back to the boat, up to the guys on top and said, hey, in fact, I, I radioed up first and said, hey, I found something that looks like a hand. And they're like, oh yeah, sure, what is it? Like nobody believed that it was like an actual hand. And when I popped to the surface and handed it to them on the boat, I could see everyone like, whoa, that really does look like a hand. Like you, you could tell they were taking it much more seriously. They pulled it up on, on the deck of the boat and they started kind of like lightly digging into it, trying to figure out whether it's metal, what is this thing? Uh, they did determine that it was metal, which obviously bones aren't metal. So that took it a step further where they started kind of breaking pieces off, trying to determine what the inside was, whether it was a solid piece of metal or was, whether it was something coated in metal. And what we determined was the hand looking thing that I brought up was actually an old like door locking mechanism, something, an old industrial part um, from who knows what. Uh, the guys up on top on the boat kind of had an idea that it might be part of some industrial rigging or something like that. but it did look a lot like a hand, especially underwater, only six inches of visibility. So um, it wasn't a bone, it wasn't a paw. And at the end of the day, at the end of the journey here, we did not find any bones, no woolly mammoth tusks, nothing uh, prehistoric that we're aware of. However, keep in mind, We've only been here for really a full day of diving. The thing about diving underwater like this is it's not like you can cover a hundred yards at a time. You know, you're only down there for 30 to 60 minutes. You're lucky to cover, I don't know, maybe, maybe a 25 by 25 area if you're searching good because you really got to get down on your hands and knees and dig through the rocks and the mud and the silt and feel what's below you because if something's been in that river for 70 years you know it's not likely to be sitting right on top of the surface it's probably going to be down in the silt and in the mud and you know with all the movement of the water that goes through there so this is a very challenging task however the fact that these guys already found a prehistoric bone from a step bison well that says everything you need to know. There's something in that river, whether it was just that one bone, but likely much, much more. So guys, we had a great time. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And I want you guys to know that this is just like the tip of the iceberg for us when it comes to searching for these bones. We have officially joined the Bone Rush. Obviously we've partnered with Bone Rush, the brand, who's gonna continue to support and help us uh, go to these crazy places and uh, look for bones. So this venture is gonna take us all over the place. In fact, we're already looking at some places up in Alaska where we might visit this summer, some old mining claims and different spots like that, where people claim to have found giant woolly mammoth tusks and other you know, valuable prehistoric bones. Um, um, I'll tell you, once you get that bug, once you get that itch to be able to go search and potentially find something like this, it gets in your blood and you really, really want to do it. It's all I've been able to think about. Like I am hooked on this and uh, you guys know when I get excited about something, I go all in. So uh, hopefully you guys will be able to join us. We're uh, talking about maybe putting together some promos or something where one, two or multiple of you could come out and go on an adventure with us. But remember right now, you can get yourself a t-shirt or a hat from Bone Rush and you're gonna get 20% off, plus you're gonna get entered to win an underwater drone that's gonna allow you to conduct these searches for yourself. And bonerush.com is gonna be a hub for all these different places that you can search. They're gonna have all sorts of information, leads in your area, places where you can go to look and see if you can actually find some of this stuff. I mean, if you found one woolly mammoth tusk, that could change your life. That's a million dollars or more. So. Don't take this lightly. To wrap this up, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Cody and the whole team over at Bone Rush. Uh, Cody was smart enough that when he heard about the Bone Rush on the Rogan podcast, he went out, bought the domain, built the company, and has done a ton of work in a very short amount of time to support guys like us and everybody like you who is interested in joining the Bone Rush. Um, also want a huge shout out to Dirty Water Dawn and the whole crew. Too many people I can't name off every single one because there was a full boat. But uh, Dawn and his team, top notch people, top notch divers, just an absolutely incredible experience. They treated us like family. And uh, I think we're gonna do a lot more stuff with those guys here soon. So buckle up and let's go find some bones. Bone Rush.